So, so far we've been playing with arrows and adding them together and moving them around in different ways, but it would be nice if we had something a little more rigorous that we could put behind these vectors. And thankfully we have two tiny vectors that can do this for us. The first one is the I vector, a small vector that is horizontal. The second one is the J vector, the same sized vector, but instead it's going straight up. Now this is really useful because if I have a vector like this, vector u, I can say how many i vectors across is it? Three i vectors across and how many j vectors is it up? So we can now express the vector u purely algebraically as u is equal to three i vectors plus four j vectors. Often thought of as three in the i direction and four in the j direction. Now, if this feels familiar to you, I'm not surprised because this feels a lot like a Cartesian plane at this point, moving across and then moving up and being able to talk like that. All right, not only can we express it as three i plus four j, but sometimes it's easier to express that as like a column vector. So we could say that vector u is equal to three, four, and we understand that to be three in the i direction and four in the j direction. So very quickly, I can express these four vectors. Uh, let's call this vector A. This vector can be expressed as two across. We're starting from here and we're moving to here. So it's two across, two in the I direction, and then one down. So minus J, minus one in the J direction. Uh, this vector here, we'll call this vector B. You can see that it's starting from here and moving this way. So it's negative i, one, negative one across. It's one, two, three down, so negative three j, and that's it, that's vector b. All right, what about vector, uh, let's call this one vector c. All right, vector c is starting from here and moving two across. So that's two i. And is it moving up or down? No, it's not. So there's no J component. We don't write zero J, we just leave it. That vector is two in the I direction. And finally, this vector here is vector D. It's moving one up, so we can say it's just simply vector J. In fact, that vector is equal to that vector. That is vector J. Now doing this makes our life really, really simple. Because if we wanna add vector A and B together, in the past, we took this vector, we grabbed vector B, moved it over to here, drew a line from the start of A to the end of B. But now we can do the whole thing algebraically. Now vector A is 2i minus j, and we wanna add vector B. We wanna add negative i minus 3j. Now that's gonna be equal to 2i plus negative i, which is i, and it's gonna be equal to negative j plus negative 3j, which is negative 4j. Now, if we were to actually do this graphically, we would see that answer's correct. If I took this over to here, you can see from there to there, I would be moving one across, one i, and I'd be moving four down, negative 4j. Now, this same thing, can be written in a different way. And this is probably feeling a little easier to work with. Two plus negative one is uh, one, so that's gonna be, we can just write one, and negative one plus negative three is negative four. So we can express the whole thing as column vectors. Um, there are times when it's better to work like this. There are times when it's better to work like that. There are times when you'll be asked to work like this or asked to work like that. Get used to both. Just in case you are wondering, this is how you express C, two and zero in the J direction, and D is going to be zero in the I direction and one in the J direction. I knew you'd be thinking it. This allows us to do some fairly complicated maths with this as well, because if we wanted to do three times the A vector minus two times the B vector, we can do all of that algebraically. Uh, I'm going to do it both ways so you can see it. It's three times the A vector, two I minus J, minus two times the B vector, negative I minus three J. All right, we expand all the brackets here, so we'll get 
6i minus 3j. And then minus 2 times minus i is positive 2i. And minus 2 times minus 3j is positive 6j. And what do we get? We get 6i plus 2i is 8i. And we get negative 3j plus 6j, which is positive 3j. Now, again, you can sort of visualize this. 3a, 3 lots of a, minus 2b. Uh, so b is this. So 2b would be double that. But negative 2b would be the reverse of that. So you go from a up to there, and you get this vector here. A lot in the i component and a little bit up. 8i plus 3j, that seems correct to me. Now, of course, we can do that whole thing with column vectors as well. So if we want to do 3i minus 2b, I always forget my little thingies. If we want to do 3a minus 2b, it's 3 times uh, a, which is 2 minus 1, minus 2 times b. Minus 1, minus 3. 3 times that is 6. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So we get 6 minus 3. And then minus 2 times minus 1 is positive uh, 2. And negative 2 times negative 3 is uh, positive um, 6. Okay, and then we get 6 plus 2 is 8. And negative 3 plus 6 is 3. And there's our answer, 8, 3, same as here. Well, that's all i got to say about that. Vectors in component form, in component form, and then some operations to go with it.